Today we are going to cover creating and managing personal articles for your real estate e-newsletter, okay? Uh, to get started, we're going to go to our messages uh, tab here, hover over messages and choose real estate newsletter. From there, we're going to navigate to the left to personal articles. All right, your personal articles page will appear. It'll show you any articles you may have already created. You can also click the show disabled articles. Uh, checkbox if you uh, have an article that you may have disabled in the past that you might want to re-enable, do some editing, and put in a newsletter, a future newsletter, okay? Uh, so to edit an existing article, you simply want to click the edit link, which is the icon of the notepad with the pencil. Alternately, you can just come over here and click new article to create a new article, all right? So now the, the personal article editing page is going to open. Uh, for your headline, we do recommend all caps. It's just uh, for aesthetic purposes. It looks pops a little bit better on that newsletter uh, email page, uh, but you're not required to use all caps. Okay. All right. And the visual um, then would be to keep the, the headline so that it fits within the, the field here that you see without having to scroll left or right, up or down to see it. If you exceed that, um, as long as you're not typing, you know, three sentences, uh, you should be fine, okay? If, if, the, uh, if you exceed this, this field here, what'll happen is that headline will wrap on the newsletter itself. It's not too, too big of a deal, but if you can use that for a visual, um, it might be helpful to you. The next is going to be your teaser summary paragraph. This is a paragraph that appears on your uh, newsletter. And if there is no additional content, if you just have a sentence or two, then that's great. Just type it in here and you're done. Um, and, and there will be no read more link and, uh, and that'll be fine. Uh, if you are going to have link to outside content or create content that will uh, become a full page article, then um, you're going to type uh, something in here that will entice your readers to click the read more link. Okay. Now, uh, you will notice for the teaser summary, there is a 512 character limit. And again, there's a little visual here. If you keep it within this field without having to scroll up or down to see it, then you're going to be fine. But if you type in a bunch more sentences and you see this little scroll bar here, uh, you're probably going to exceed the character limit and your, uh, your teaser will probably be truncated, okay? So uh, remember to keep that uh, teaser summary as brief as possible, all right? Now, the next section is if you want your article to uh, link to additional info or expanded story. In most cases, that will be true and you will. Uh, if if not, you're simply going to say no linking, and and that's uh, and that's absolutely fine. Your next option is to link to an outside URL, uh, and and to do that, you're simply going to click this checkbox. You're going to um, capture the URL that you want to link to. In this case, I could uh, I could capture this hyperlink right here for my article, and paste it in here. Now we always recommend that you open a new tab. You pop in the URL that you want to link to and hit go and make sure that link works, okay? Because it's very embarrassing if you put in a URL that doesn't work because then your recipients are gonna click the read more link and either it's gonna land on the wrong page or it won't work at all, okay? So be very careful and always test your hyperlinks when you're using this option, okay? Now in this case, uh, when they click the read more link, it's simply going to take them to the website that we specified, okay? So we're going to actually, um, the other option is to uh, create a new Panda page for your expanded story. So let's click that link instead. I'm just going to take that out of there. I'm going to say link to a new Panda page with my own expanded story. And now the editing uh, feature will open for you, okay? So, um, we're gonna. We want. We found this uh, nice article about some local events that are happening, and we want to make our personal article about that local, uh, local events. So what we need to do is we need to take this content that appears here and get it into New Panda. Well, uh, your first instinct would be simply to copy and paste that right into New Panda. Just copy it here and come in here and hit your paste. Well, a couple bad things could happen if you do that. Number one, the content that we've that we've selected is designed for a website. 
okay? And there's HTML that you can't see behind the scenes that makes the content look good and act the way that it should on a website. That HTML is not designed for email. And when you uh, paste directly into New Panda from a website, from a Microsoft Word document, from an Excel document, or some other source that you found, um, and you just paste it right in there, number one, it might not even work depending on what you're trying to paste, or number two, uh, it may not behave the way you expect to it to in an email. And number three, the worst case scenario is it could cause your message to not be delivered because when you send that message out, AOL and Hotmail and Gmail and uh, MSN and Comcast and all those people, um, they scan the emails that come into their servers, especially if they get more than one of the same message uh, which happens a lot with the newsletter, right? So they scan that HTML and they know uh, just by the HTML pattern whether that uh, message was designed for email ability, whether it designed, was designed for Microsoft Word, whether it was designed for a website, et cetera, et cetera. And if they see a bunch of emails coming through that are absolutely designed for uh, websites, Word documents, et cetera, uh, they say, oh, this looks like spammy content because that's what spammers do. They do not design their messages for email. They just grab it from wherever and go. So what we recommend that you do, and the only way that we can support your content uh, is if you open a notepad or an equivalent type document and you paste your content from the website or from the wherever, from the Microsoft Word, and you paste it into a notepad. Once you've done that, you can reselect that content from the notepad, and now you can paste it into the new Panda editing box. And you'll say, oh no, look, what happened to all that beautiful formatting? Well, uh, it was removed. Why? Because that formatting was designed for a website. And that formatting and that HTML, when it hits Comcast and uh, Gmail, uh, is going to get your message blocked uh, or put in a spam folder. And so you don't want to do it. It's a little bit more work on the front side, but uh, in the long run, you're going to be much more satisfied with your results uh, if you uh, don't paste content that is not email Friendly. Now we have lots of editing tools here that you can make this look uh, just absolutely gorgeous. Okay, you can uh, you can up you can uh, use bold and italics and underlines. You can change your font size. You can change your font color. Uh, you can you know just make your you can insert tables here. You can attach documents. You can add bullet points, indents, numbers, hyperlinks. There are just lots of things that you can do uh, to make your uh, content look professional and beautiful, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. There are separate videos, by the way, for um, inserting hyperlinks and inserting images into your personal article. So please take advantage of those um, those videos for instructions on doing that. All right, let's pretend uh, that our article looks uh, pretty much the way that we want it to. Now, another thing that we need to do while we're doing our personal articles is we need to make sure we are obeying copyright laws. If you're, <coughs> excuse me, if you're borrowing content uh, from a, an online source, you must check that source and make sure it's usually at the bottom of the page that the content is not copyrighted. If it is, you must have permission in order to use it in your newsletter, okay, or in an email or anything else. So be careful of copyright laws. And the other thing that we want to do when we're using content from another source, we always want to give credit to that uh, to that source. And so all I do is at the bottom of mine, I put a link. I name the source and I put a link to that uh, directly to the source, okay? And that's really quick and easy. All right, so here's my link text. I'm going to choose new window so it doesn't replace the current. I'm going to say okay. And there we go. And so now we've, uh, we've covered our bases with the source, okay? 
So the next thing is an email uh, thumbnail image, and that's a little picture that appears on your newsletter. We recommend that the, the thumbnail that you use be no larger than 100 pixels wide by 100 pixels tall. That image is going to display at whatever size you upload it. So if you upload an image that is 1,000 pixels wide by 1,000 pixels tall, that's, that's how big it's going to appear on your newsletter. It's going to blow up your template. Okay, so be very careful. Uh, you might want to resize any images before uploading them into New Panda. There are free uh, image editing software programs out there that you can use. Just Google free image editing software. There are also some not so free ones. I bought one for $50 four years ago. Um, I've been using it ever since and I've never paid another penny for it. So, uh, you know, there's definitely options there. So you're simply going to browse for your thumbnail image. It's going to show you the image name and that portion is complete. The next thing that we're going to do is add this article to the following upcoming issues. Now if you're not done with your article that's totally cool you can save it here and it won't appear in anything because you haven't selected anything which it might be preferable if you have not completed uh, the editing portion. The other thing that I want to mention here is you want to save often when you're working on your personal articles because if you get a phone call, you wander away from your computer, uh, somebody else comes and says, hey, oh, I want to use this computer really quick, or you have an internet interruption, or your three-year-old comes by and starts pressing buttons, you do not want to lose uh, that work that you have done. So be sure to save, save, save often. All right. And then finally, you're going to choose at least one upcoming newsletter in which um, your article should appear. You can use your shift or control keys to select additional consecutive or uh, even non-consecutive uh, articles in which your um, article should appear. You see the disable this article when you're done with it. Just click that button and it won't appear uh, in any upcoming newsletters. It will also not appear in your menu unless you specify that it should. Now we're going to save our article. To preview, we're simply going to go back over to our newsletter settings. And we're going to, excuse me, we're going to go to our e-newsletter overview. Sorry about that. We're going to come up here and preview future publications. We're going to choose the one that we uh, selected that article to appear in. All right. In here, we're going to see Waterfront Wednesdays in Louisville. I know my image doesn't match. I'm sorry. Uh, and then we're going to test it. We're, we're going to test it by clicking the more link. We're going to make sure that it looks the way that we want it to look. You're going to test all your hyperlinks in there. Make sure they all work and land where you want them to land. And that is how you create and manage personal articles in New Panda.